of Parliament, Mzwanele Nyonjo, joins us now. A very good evening to you, Mr. Nyonjo. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, how has your party received the news? Mr. Nyonjo, are you with us? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you now. If I could ask you to please raise your voice. How has your party received the news? Evening, Kevin Tokyo and the viewers. We, we welcome the judgment. We received the news. We welcome the constitutional court judgment. And uh, we're also hoping that the, the, the IEC, through the IEC electoral court, is going to allow the PAC, uh, at least PAC, because remember we have a court order. And we only received the court order on the last day of the registration. And in that court order, the IEC is directed at allowing the PAC through the application to register the PAC member or the PAC for registration. Meaning, meaning we have an exceptional case and the PAC will have to make a, 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 an application and ask the local court to give us a minute day so that we register because we only received the judgment after noon on the day of the, of the registration. Otherwise, welcome the decision of the High Court. We will definitely abide by it. There's nothing we can do, but the electoral cost must be okay to register other regions where we have not registered. Okay. Uh, so, do you anticipate any challenges going ahead in having holding these local government elections, especially the restrictions we spoke about in campaigning as well? No, 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 I don't, I, I don't foresee any, any, any problem because so many things have been happening when there is this COVID-19. So, so, so many countries did go to elections in the midst of COVID-19 and, and that happened very well. The problem is that the timeline of IEC and also this voter registration. Remember, for example, so this is where I come from in the Eastern Cape, my what is it, 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 a complete new new work according to the new demarcation. And all of us, we were still registering for the other work, meaning that they must, IEC must open the voter registration so that people are able to vote. Otherwise, we will be voting in wrong words, and, and that will mean the election will not be free and fair. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us, PAC President and Member of Parliament, Mzwanele Nyonjo. And of course, we will be speaking to other political parties as well. But we speak now to Makosini Mkijwa, who is a political analyst. A very good evening to you. And thank you so much for speaking to us, Mr. Mkijwa. So um, you had said there were other ways that the IC could have taken uh, to avoid all of this, this disappointment. And of course, some have predicted that they were never going to be successful. So take us through your thought process upon hearing the news. Look, I, I think, uh, good, good, good evening and to your uh, viewers. At TV. So I, I think this was a good decision. I think, um, you know, the Constitutional Court may have its, had, it, had its own reasons. But the reason for me is that there was really no need for us to postpone the elections. Uh, the idea that, uh, you know, because there's COVID, therefore people cannot uh, vote. When we go to take vaccinations, we queue. In everything that we do, whether ATM, you know, going to the bank, whatever, we queue. So we can do this safely following uh, COVID protocols. There was no need to postpone the elections. And secondly, the idea that elections must be postponed because we must have rallies and there must be door-to-door -door campaigns. Those things are, have since been outdated in my view, because if you take South Africa, it's a, it's a well-developed country, though not many people have access to the internet, but there is no square kilometer of South Africa that the SABC does not cover, that the radio and television does not cover. As I'm talking to you now, thousands and thousands of people are listening to me. I don't have to go to each and every house to say what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is the politicians, those who want to be elected, must come to your studio, must come to the SABC. You must have the leader of the ANC, the leader of the DA and all the other parties to come there and talk to you and directly to the people and tell them what they are going to do for them. This thing of going to door-to-door -to -door campaigns, it is problematic also in that a lot of lies get said to people. People are promised things that are impossible because there's nobody to fact check those who are campaigning. And also rallies are not where messages 
or where campaigns, um, where, where political parties say exactly what they are going to do. Rallies are about rallying people, are about energizing people. And we can see at a later stage how people get energized. What is important now is for the debate to take place, for political parties to say to voters, this is what we're going to do for you. And for that, they don't need door to door campaigns. They don't need rallies for that. They need to use the media. They need to use social media. Mm. I mean, other organizations had made suggestions on how to use the technology in order to circumvent some of these challenges. But these are the same political parties that are also critical of the IEC's handling of the business of elections, saying that they dropped the ball. It was very clear that um, they're not where they're supposed to be in terms of logistical preparation. So what are you, uh, your thoughts about this? Can the two lie side by side? Can we say uh, the IEC is inept and at the same time say, well, digitize the process and we will succeed far better. Look, I, I wouldn't go so far as to criticize um, the IEC. I think they have a history of holding elections successfully and in a professional manner. We've had credible elections all the time. All credit is due to them for that. So I think what we need to do also is to look at the position in which South Africa is and it's lacking behind so many countries even in Africa in terms of technology. Uh, in terms of access to the internet. Not many people have access to the internet. And also, um, you know, we, we, we can digitize some of um, uh, the processes uh, following what is international best practice. But I think what is important for now, because what we start with now is the manual balloting that we've always used since 1994. Even with that, it's possible and it's, it, it's, it's, it's possible to have credible free and fair elections following all COVID protocols. I think at a later stage, we'll have to see what uh, the best way forward is, uh, digitizing and all that, as the whole world, that's the direction it is mm -hmm. taking. But really the most important thing is, you can have political parties campaigning, you can have political parties saying what their message is, telling the voters what they're going to them, using the platforms that we are using right now, social media and other platforms. Really, there was no need for the elections to be postponed. That was something that was done. You know, I think also it could have created more problems going into the future. Because all that a party that is in government or parties that are leading need to do is to allow crises to fester, to become, uh, you know, uh, disasters, and then later on point to those disasters okay. and say, we cannot Makosini, hold the sort. Please do stay with us. Makosini, your political analyst, uh, staying with us too.